been going to therapy though. You know, any therapy heads in the building? Yeah, nice. What's your biggest trauma? I'm kidding. No. <laughs> Just a little light crowd work, huh? Yeah. No, I've been going to therapy a bunch, and I have empathy for my dumbass dad. You know that sucks. You know, <laughs> seeing it from his side. You know, because look, was he the best dad in the world? No, but did he do his best? Also, no. But you know, whatever. He gave it a hot 65 percent. <laughs> He did, I'll give him credit again, he gave me a better childhood than he had, right? That's really all you can ask on some level. Like, his family was all fucked up. Like, here's how my dad's parents met, right? This is Greece in the 40s, right? It's still arranged marriages. And no one in my grandfather's village wants to marry him, right? Nobody. Doesn't matter how many goats they throw in the trade, no one's biting, right? No one in mainland Greece will marry him, which is actually kind of impressive, right? Like. There's no internet, this is word of mouth spreading about what a piece of shit he is, right? Basically what they end up doing is they catfish a family no. on an island eight hours away, right? There's no way for them to meet before the wedding. They do the deal through letters. Uh, finally, it's set, everything's good to go. They take this eight hour boat ride out to this woman's island. And the second uh, my grandfather steps off the boat, the woman he's supposed to marry looks at him and goes, no, absolutely not, I'm not. I'm not marrying this guy. And then her dad goes, ah, geez, well, you came all this way. Uh, why don't you marry my other daughter? And those are my grandparents, that's them. <laughs> Wild, right? Have you ever had like a bad Craigslist roommate? And you're like, oh, once this lease is up, I am out of here. Uh, imagine if that lease was your whole life and that roommate cream pied you because that, <laughs> that was my grandma's life and yeah, you'd think something like that would make somebody a bitch, and you would be correct in this instance, actually. <laughs> I feel bad and everything, but really a tough hang, I'll be honest with you guys. I went to visit her, actually, on her deathbed, and uh, she had pretty bad dementia by the time I got to see her, and I'm trying to communicate with her, and she just looks at me and she goes, who are you? You got fatter. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. Okay, pick one, okay? <laughs> Either you don't know who I am or you don't know I got fatter. That's how that works, but I gotta hand it to her, you know? She snuck one in right at the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, you're fat! <laughs> one of the best to ever do it, folks. Hang her moo, -moo up in the rafters. <laughs> I like my family, they are pretty funny. Uh, my mom's mom is funny too, my grandma on the other side. She's, she's great, she's very accepting but very ignorant at the same time, which is a really funny combo. Like over the holidays a couple years ago, we were watching this old Greek movie and one of the characters, it's revealed, thinks Jews drink blood, you know? And it's like an old movie, he's the village idiot, it's obviously a joke, everyone's making fun of him, everybody's laughing, I look at my family, they're laughing, I look at my grandma, she's like confused. I'm like, oh, Grandma, is this hilarious? This guy thinks Jews drink blood. And she's like, well, yeah, but... <laughs> they do, right? <laughs> but the way she said it was, and you shouldn't judge other people's culture, Stavros. <laughs> what? You think Jews are vampires? But we should let it slide for diversity reasons? <laughs> Incredible perspective, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's great. Uh, but I will say, the more time I spend around Greek people, the more time I think it's crazy the kinds of immigrants we're banning in this country, you know? Like, it should be us, right? Like, we got enough Europeans, right? Like, a racist might be like, oh, well, we can't have refugees from the Middle East. What if they commit sex crimes? It's like, okay, well, have you ever met an Italian man? <laughs> Have you ever tried to purchase pizza in this country one time? <laughs> hey, Bella, how old are you? Are? <laughs> that guy's getting waved through customs, why? <laughs> oh, fuck. You know how Inuit people have like 30 words for snow in their language? Italian is similar in that they don't have a single word for consent in theirs. <laughs> 
No, I shouldn't shit on Italians. I'm Greek. We're basically Italians that peaked in high school, right? No. We've been coasting on democracy for quite some time now. It is a gorgeous place, though. I do love visiting over there. It fucking rocks. I remember I took a, I took a visit uh, there a couple years ago uh, with my girlfriend at the time. And when you take an international trip like that with somebody, you learn a lot about each other. We were gone for 10 days, just me and her. And what we learned is that we did not want to be together anymore. That was, that was the big takeaway for us. Kind of tough, I'll be honest with you, to break up on vacation, you know? That's not how you see your Chase Sapphire rewards going, you know? <laughs> you ever paid $3,000 to be the saddest you've ever been? <laughs> it was my fault, though. I took a rich girl on vacation, right? Rich people don't give a fuck about vacations. Poor people, could you imagine breaking up on vacation? The only good week of your life? You're not. You're not doing that. But don't get me wrong, she wasn't like evil rich, right? She's not space for fun rich, but I'll put it this way. When the shampoo ran out in her home, they just threw the bottle away, right? There was, there was no filling it with water and living off bubbles for a week, you know? She never had shitty bubbles hair, right? There were no omelets for dinner, you know? Like, whoa, hot dogs again? Mom's the coolest. It's like, no, buddy, mom is not that cool. These are struggle dogs right here. Struggle dogs. We gotta make these last till dad's disability check comes in. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know this, but making a pack of Hebrew nationals last eight days, that's actually white trash Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you know, it was a good relationship while it lasted. I'm not bitter, you know, things end. Um, and we had, good, we had a good time. We had a good sex life, you know? We were really into role-playing. Anybody here role-play? Nice, what do we do? <laughs> huh? Say it again? Schoolgirl classic, very nice. Yeah, that's good. Is, who's the, is this like teacher schoolgirl or just like schoolgirl? Schoolgirl, schoolgirl, now we're talking. Oh. Wow. <laughs> A twist on an old classic. <laughs> the Bud Light Lime of role-playing. <laughs> nice, hell yeah. I really like role-playing because I always pick a guy that comes really fast. That's my, that's my character. There's a guy that busts quick and then plays NBA 2K for like a half hour. <laughs> I really commit to that one. I, I'm sort of a method actor when it comes to that one. <laughs> yeah, I could tell though in hindsight that that relationship was kind of losing some steam, you know? I think you can tell in the way you initiate sex when the passion starts to go, you know? Like when we first started dating, we'd go on these long dates, we'd talk for hours, there'd be a spark, we'd kiss, I'd be like, wow, this is really gonna happen. The way I knew we were gonna have sex at the end of the relationship is if I went to the bathroom and she was like, wash your hands with soap this time. <laughs> Like, hell yeah, dude, nice. <laughs> why she want them clean, huh? Yeah. She's not trying to get crumbs in there, that's why. Oh, no. I'm about to have sex. Uh, <laughs> it was good, though. I did, you know, it was, I learned a lot about myself being in a long-term relationship, you know? Like, I learned I'm, I'm more traditional in some ways than I realize, even though I consider myself a feminist overall, you know? Like, do I want my girlfriend to shave her legs? Yes, but I will allow her to support me financially. So, I'm sort of a modern guy in that sense. Thank you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Please. I'm just doing my part. <laughs> now, I'm a feminist though, you know, that part's real. And I think my, my favorite part of feminism is the concept of mansplaining. You know, because basically that means men aren't allowed to explain anything anymore, which means I could just be dumb as hell, right? <laughs> Like if one of my friends, if she's like, hey, what'd you get this book? I'd be like, nice try. <laughs> I see what you're up to, but I'm not reading anymore. I'm a feminist, thank you very much. 